What's up guys, the May Patreon rewards are now available. Cyclonic Rift, Jace the Mind Sculptor, and Avison Angel of Hope are all available through the end of the month. If you'd like to support our channel and pick up these sweet proxies, you can do so at patreon.com slash it resolves or by clicking the link in the description below. What's going on guys? Welcome to the next gameplay video. Uh, you may notice we've got a little bit of a different layout going on. Uh, I did get a few comments on a few videos uh, just suggesting that, you know, with with people especially watching on mobile, uh, it makes it a little bit difficult when you've got a lot of stuff going on on the screen. So I thought I'd taper it down a little bit. We still have the face cam uh, and then just the gameplay just to tail it back a little bit, make it a little bit more digestible uh, for all you people watching, especially on mobile. Um, one thing I do want to mention, though, it is the beginning of the month, so we do have new Patreon rewards. Uh, if you're watching, uh, you probably saw the ad at the very beginning of the video. Uh, the The rewards are up now. You can get them anytime. Uh, Cyclonic Rift, uh, Jace the Mind Sculptor, and Avison Angel of Hope are this month's rewards. So you have all month, uh, but if you'd like to check those out, uh, the link for our Patreon is down in the description. We'd certainly appreciate it. So let's jump in. Uh, today we are playing Mono White. Um, this is a deck that uh, kind of, I, I mean, we saw a little bit before Akoria, uh, this do pretty well, in fact, uh, mainly with Heliod Sun's cr Sun Crowned uh, when that came out. We got a lot of really, really good stuff for this deck. I mean, Daxos, uh, Linden was here from the previous sets, but uh, in combination with Daxos, you can really gain a lot of life. And then, of course, with things like uh, Alciad of Life's Bounty, uh, we got another kind of protection spell, but also life linker uh, to kind of aid in all this. Now, uh, with some new cards from Akoria, really just two, um, I do think that this deck is is worth kind of a relook. Uh, in particular, Cub Warden here. Uh, so it's a three five for three and a white with life link. Uh, you can mutate it for two and two white, uh, and then whenever this creature mutates, you create two one one cat creature tokens with life link. So. This is kind of a way to spread out your board a little bit, uh, if that makes sense. Um, I'm kind of debating on even running a playset of these, but this is just kind of a stock list that I was able to get, uh, and, and it only did run two. I'm interested to see how well this card performs. We also do have a one of Luris. Um, Luris is great in this deck because, again, it just gives you a lot of, you know, freebie kind of stuff. Uh, if you don't have anything in hand, which this deck tends to run out of, of gas a little bit every once in a while, Luris is a great thing to be able to bring back some of these early game creatures. A Johnny's Pride Mate is one huge target in this this deck. You certainly run into removal spells uh, against the Pride Mate quite often. Uh, and so being able to maybe play him back, uh, mitigate some of that removal is very, very good. Not to mention bringing back like a Life's Bounty gives you additional protection if you can leave up that one mana. So... Uh, to go through kind of the rest of the deck, at the one mana slot, we do have the Healer's Hawk and the Life's Bounty, just both lifelinkers. Uh, this one's a flyer. This one gives us um, a little bit of protection. Uh, a Johnny's Pride Mate, the big beater of the deck. It's a 2-2. Every time you gain life, you put a 1-1 one -one counter on it. Pretty straightforward card, <clears throat> and this has you know, been seen in many, many of standards. Uh, Hushbringer is pretty cool. It's a 1-2 flyer lifelink for 2 uh, when it enters the battle or creatures entering the battlefield don't cause abilities to trigger. That does uh, shut off Daxos, uh, which is a little bit of a, a nombo, um, which is why we're not running the full uh, four here. But uh, I, I think it's worth it. There are a lot of things that do cause uh, triggers, um, like uh, Garuda. Um, there's any of the Titans really coming into play. There's a lot of stuff that you can shut down with Hushbringer. Uh, so against the right deck, this is a very big priority card. Not always, but definitely very strong. Daxos, a way to gain life and just be a, a, a huge butt creature. Um, he gets a lot of toughness in this deck if you can get a bunch of stuff out. Uh, obviously, it's equal to your devotion to white, so uh, if the more things you get out, the more Daxos gets pumped up. Uh, Heliod here, a fantastic card, 5-5 five, five for 3. Uh, now, it isn't a creature unless you your devotion is uh, more than 5, or 5 or more, I should say. Uh, but whenever you gain life, you put a 1-1 counter on target creature or enchantment you control. Uh, and then you can pay two and give another creature lifelink until the end of the turn, which is awesome. Linden, uh, <clears throat> a very, very strong card. 3-3 three, three Vigilance for three. Whenever it attacks, you gain a life. Or excuse me, whenever a creature you control attacks, gains a life. Uh, it is white creatures. All of our creatures are white. Luris lets you recur things. Banishing Light is in here for our um, removal. Uh, we don't have a ton in here, but Banishing Light does give us some options. 
uh, and then Cub Warden, and then a Johnny Strength of the Pride is our big Planeswalker. So five mana or five loyalty for four mana. Uh, you can gain some life with it, or you can uh, minus two and get essentially a Johnny's Pride made out. Uh, if you get to uh, the 15 or more life than your starting total, uh, then you can really, really do some damage and just exile basically your opponent's board. Uh, it's really, really good. Um, kind of awesome. So uh, as far as the lands go, we do have four Castle Ardenvale Vale and then just 20 planes. It's pretty straightforward. So let's jump in. Let's see how we do. Uh, I did play a little bit of Mono White uh, pre Akoria. Uh, since then, though, I've not really, so I'm I'm kind of interested to see how this does in just best of ones. Um, yeah, and I'm liking the new layout. It's nice to have a little bit more room, we'll say. Um, hopefully you guys enjoy it, too. Uh, and still, I would appreciate if anybody wants to check out our Patreon just to support what we do. It would be amazing of you uh, to do so. Uh, this is a bit of a weird hand, but I am going to keep it. Um would kind of hope for a Daxos instead of a Hushbringer here, but worse things have happened. That helps. That really helps. Um, this may eat a removal spell, and that's fine. Okay. Uh, hmm. Okay, hear me out. I'm actually going to do this here. Normally I do not, um, but against this deck, I really just want to mitigate threats as much as possible, especially with upcoming Ember Cleaves. We know they're going to have them. Um, and so being able to, uh, you know, mitigate that, that damage as much as possible is going to be very, very helpful. Wow, they got a good card. Very good card. Um... Let's do this. Let's do this. Oh, crap. That was the wrong card. Whoops. Played a little too fast. My mistake. Uh, I was accident. I was trying to go for a pride mate. That was just my mistake. Um, the good thing about this is we do gain, obviously, a good bit of life here, but um, uh, I'm going to say no blocks. We really, I'm going to be able to uh, pride mate here, so I really want to make sure we can gain life. Uh, let's put this out. And we'll just all attack here. Put two counters on this. Now at least we've got a blocker that is not in like shock damage range, which is great. They can double up, obviously, but. <sighs> yep. If they attack with this, I'm easily gonna block. We'd have more pride mate. Pride mates, excuse me. That's not good for us, but. Hmm. Very not good for us. Uh, let's actually take out this. Um, I don't know if we just lose on the spot. We're down to one. Ugh. No, no. Um, I'm pretty sure we just lose this. Uh, no attacks. We do off of just this. So, all right. That was a pretty quick game. Unfortunately, we got a little stuck there on land. They did as well, but they did have the uh, runaway steamkin. Um, which I'm telling you is a good card. It helps you get there. Um, I think given another land there, we may have been, we wouldn't have lived that turn, but, uh, given some less aggressive attacks on my end, we probably could have gotten there. Um, that might've just been some misplaying on my side. All right. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, we have a nice two, three, potentially this, and then four. So I'm gonna try it. Um, I don't know what qualifies as like an actually terrible keep for this deck. Um, looks like we're up against a very similar deck. Uh, yeah. Um, blue white flyers, maybe. Uh, we played a deck like this. It was interesting. Uh, it was suggested to us by one of our Instagram followers. Thank you, Adam. Uh, if anybody has a deck suggestion, they are always welcome to uh, to leave those for us. Um, yeah, let's just go ahead and throw this out there. I'm not going to be able to block here, which sucks, but um, I think that's the correct play. We'll see. We'll see what they do. It's a good one. 
Yeah, yeah. Here I think we banishing light the Imperion Eagle. That card is just way too good. Um And we'll attack here. We can't block anyway. If they've got another eagle, that's gonna suck. But you know. Not much we can do about it. Um I think we have to get that eagle out of there, uh, regardless. It looks like they do not have another one. Which is great for us. Are you out there? We'll try for the Linden. Um, not sure what interaction this deck necessarily has. So we do get to put a counter on this, which is great. <clears throat> sure. Wow. Pre-combat draw card. That's a little interesting. I don't I think you should second main that. Um, but you know, obviously I'm not the one playing the deck, so I'm gonna do this. Um specifically to keep this from drawing any cards. I know that they can do it with this, um, but I think that's a good play there. Um So we can mutate this. Which I kind of like the idea of. Let's put it over. We'll just play this guy out. Start gaining some life back and get a bunch of counters on this. Um, that feels pretty good. Back up to 18. I like that. Uh, really, really like Cub Warden in this position. Now, the problem, obviously, is if they remove this, we've invested two cards into one. That kind of sucks. But we have gotten a couple of extra creatures out of the deal. So, you know, it's a trade-off. Um, it's not great for us, but it is what it is. Sure. Gonna gain some life. This is just a life gain fight. Um, let's play this out. And we'll play this out. There we go. Got it. All right. That actually worked out really well. Now, that is a very non-interactive deck, um, at least from my experience. Ooh, sorry, guys. Looks like we're dropping some frames. I think we're back up now. Um, that's a very non-interactive deck, uh, that Flyers deck. It has a few things, but generally speaking, it's a very kind of goldfishy kind of deck, really, where you just kind of play out your threats and hope you get there. Um, we're a very similar deck, uh, but we did have that Banishing Light, which helped. Um, I think... I don't think we would have died necessarily, but we would have gotten pretty low had we not gotten that Banishing Light out uh, when we did. Uh, and if they had a follow-up Imperion Eagle, we would have definitely, definitely been in trouble. So, um, kind of a lucky draw on our side. Um, again, we've got a nice 2-3-4. We'll try it. Um, I did not look to see if they had a companion or anything, but they do not. So, we'll see what we can do. Um, I've always kind of had a soft spot, so to, to kind of, I guess, put some context to this, um, I've never liked white as a color all that much. I mean, I, I, I love magic regardless, but white has always been my least favorite color. Um, and it's, it's not because it does bad things or it's a bad color. I just don't really enjoy it in general. Um, and I, during standard seasons in the past, I've always kind of found it to be like, okay, another white weenie deck, whatever. Um, however, I, I weirdly have a soft spot for these like life gain decks. I don't know why. It just feels really good to gain a lot of life, I guess. Um, and this deck certainly can do that. I mean, we saw it last game where that Cub Warden came in clutch. I mean, we saved ourselves a lot of damage back uh, because of that. Um, there have been decks in the past, I know, like during Amonkhet block, uh, where it was very, I think it was blue-white, if I'm recalling correctly, because I think you had Champion of Wits and stuff like that, um, but Anointed Procession as well, and an Anointed Priest, where you would just start gaining tons and tons of life because you would um, embalm stuff. 
get tokens out, those tokens will be copied because of anointed uh, procession, procession, I believe is the name of the card. Um, and then you would just continuously gain life off of the priest, but then also draw a bunch of cards with the champion. Like you did a lot of cool stuff. Now that was, I believe, blue white, not just pure white, but I, I want to say there was a pure white version somewhere in there as well. Um, and that's just really, really fun. I love that. I think that's very exciting. Um, but it is more of a straightforward deck. Like it's not, it, it plays a little bit closer. I would say to the, I, I don't mean this in a demeaning way, but more towards the mono red side of things where mono red, you know, as far as decks go is a pretty straightforward deck. You're doing as much damage as possible. Um, I will say in this iteration of mono red, we've played it recently. There's a few more decisions you have to make, but it's all about dealing the damage as quickly as you can. And that's kind of it. Um, so, uh, I like when you get get a little bit more decision making into a white deck. Unfortunately, this one doesn't have a ton, um, but that's okay. It doesn't need it by any means. Um, I will block anything pretty much. Um, again, I think against these red decks, you kind of have to one for one trade as much as you can, uh, just to. Ugh, that feels bad though just to keep yourself alive long enough to, to actually do anything late game. This isn't good though. Um, I don't think we block here. If they want to shock this, they can shock this, but I'm going to make them burn the spell. Uh, I don't just want to toss it away. Okay, this feels kind of bad, but I am going to Banishing Light a Fervent Champion. <laughs> Uh, for very good reason, I think, here. Um, if they don't have anything to deal with the Pride Mate and they don't have another Fervent Champion, we're in a position where we get to just, you know, keep this guy off of our back a little bit uh, and get to four mana where we can throw this guy out. Okay. Here they may have the Rimrock Knight, right? And next turn, we're looking to Cub Warden. I'm gonna knock block. Um, maybe I'm wrong in doing this. We'll we'll see. I don't love that, but I'm I'm gonna try it. Please just don't kill this. Okay. Perfect. So let's mutate onto this. Over. I am gonna attack here. Uh, we're going to gain a little bit of life back, get a counter on this, and now we've got a couple blockers. So um, even though these guys are going to die, no matter what they attack with, um, we at least have some blockers out, which is good. Okay, yep. And a Scorch Spitter, that's fine. Well, not fine. It's not good for us. That's definitely true. Um, in this case, I'm not going to block. That's one damage, so I'm not as worried about that. Okay. Hmm. I think we just play this out. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Ah, uh, this may be wrong. We're trying it. We're getting this out of kill range is part of what we're doing. And we're also just going to gain a butt ton of life, um, which is great. The worry here, though, is if they've got like a Torbran or something along those lines. I mean, we've got this now, which is great, but this is a bit of an all-in investment. <sighs> okay, we actually won. That was a bit surprising. I did not think we would win that. Uh, was that game three? I have not been keeping track. I think that was game three. I think we lost the first one and won the second two. Cool. Well, we got there. Um, so this this is kind of how the mono white deck works. Uh, you, you get out those pride mates and hopefully you can kind of take over the game with them. Uh, we saw it there in that last one and the, the one before that, in fact, where we really got a lot of stuff piled onto it and could do a lot of damage. And that's the goal. You gain a bunch of life back. It's okay to lose some in the beginning, but you do kind of have to be careful, especially against those mono red decks. So 
I like it. We're going to give it a second shot here. Uh, so we'll we'll play another three games with it. Hopefully you enjoyed this. Hopefully you enjoy the new layout as well. It's a little bit easier, hopefully, to watch. Um, and uh, please make sure, as always, to, to check out the links below. Patreon's down there. Instagram, if you're not already following, we do a lot of stuff there. Uh, so thank you guys so much. Really do appreciate you watching, and I will see you very soon in part two of uh, this uh, mono whitelist. Very excited, guys. I'll see you later.